special thanks to Patreon support Transfighter 8 for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Scare2 if we're here bringing you another Minecraft World War II BAFTA build tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and building the HMS Rodney. The HMS Rodney was one of the two Nelson class battleships built for the Royal Navy in the mid 1920s. The ship entered service in 1928 and spent her peacetime career with the Atlantic and home fleets, sometimes serving as a flagship when her sister ship Nelson was being refitted. During the early stages of the Second World War, she searched for German or commerce raiders, participated in the Norwegian campaign, and escorted convoys in the Atlantic Ocean. Rodney played a major role in the sinking of the German battleship Bismarck in mid-1941. After a brief refit in the United States, she escorted convoys to Malta and supported the Allied invasion of French Algeria during Operation Torch in late 1942. The ship covered the invasions of Sicily, Operation Husky, and Italy, Operation Baytown, in mid-1943. During the Normandy lands in June 1944, Rodney provided naval gunfire support and continued to do so for several following defenses near the French city of uh, Caen. The ship escorted one convoy through the Arctic to the Soviet Union in late 1944. In poor condition from extremely heavy use and lack of refits, she was reduced to reserves in late 1945 and was scrapped in 1948. So yeah, the HMS Rodney, a uh, one of the Nelson-class battleships and a very interesting one to say the very least. Uh, the ship here has a very unique design which really kind of stands apart from other battleships that we've really seen and we'll go ahead and take a look here at the uh, ship here shortly and kind of cover that a little bit further but before we do i wanted to go ahead and give a special thanks to patreon supporter trench fighter 8 for making this tutorial possible if you guys are interested in supporting the channel more you guys already do feel free to check my patreon page link is always in my video descriptions where you can go and play this moment to the channel every month and in doing so earn a video core request you're choosing really helps support the work i do on my channel and is very greatly appreciated so definitely feel free to check it out if you are interested anyways let's go ahead and kind of move in here to taking a look at hms rodney Starting off with, we have the bow of the ship, and right away you're going to see the very unique uh, layout for the ship. The ship had its three main uh, batteries located on the forward bow section of the ship, and uh, basically kind of go into the midship section. And then from there on back, we had all the superstructure equipped with our anti-aircraft guns, our funnels, our conning tower, our rear mast, all that stuff. It's very interesting to say the very least, and uh, definitely a unique ship for its time. Kind of reminds me of the... Um, I believe it's the Jean Bart or something like that, uh, some French naval um, ship designs as well, kind of following the same type of format. Um, but yeah, awesome looking ship, uh, really good detail all the way around. Obviously we have all our forward deck details, our turrets, and then we have our conning tower here, um, which looks nice. And then we come back further, we have all of our anti-aircraft gun positions here throughout the deck space. The back here, which would be able to house seaplanes and... Um, has a lifeboat right there for right now and some anti-aircraft guns and stuff like that around it It's got secondary guns located here on the sides and then also some rear guns here as well So a uh, pretty nicely armored ship and a really good ship in terms of being able to kind of Go toward the enemy have it forward fire and be able to bring all three cannons to bear so or all three main batteries to bear so interesting design very unique for a very uh, unique situations and um you know, overall pretty historic one as it did have a part to play in the sinking of Bismarck. Anyways, let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer. Alright guys, going ahead and move into our first layer, we're going ahead and moving into layer number one. For layer one to go ahead and get started with, one thing I want to mention is that if you're completely new to my BAFTA build tutorials, the first few layers here I like to do both half on camera and half off. What this means is we build in the center line of the ship and then the right side and it'll be up to you guys to take the right side, copy it over to the left side. It's pretty straightforward stuff and we're only going to do this for about the first four layers for the ship as the hole is completely symmetrical on both sides so we don't really have to worry about having any kind of major differences and once we get into the superstructure doing our deck and our gun and all that, guns and all that stuff and the superstructure then we'll start to kind of get into doing each layer all together as we do have a lot of uh you know intricate little bits and stuff they're easy explained doing it all together um so just want to go ahead and explain that real quick before we go ahead and get started one thing also to mention is that if you do want to build the ship in the water which i imagine a lot of you guys are going to want to we want to make sure that this layer here which is layer number one for the ship is going to be uh, positioned just like this in the water you can see here the blue line representing the water level and you can see this is basically one whole block underneath the water surface and um, that's where we're going to basically be starting this layer so very important to make sure that's correct before we go ahead and get started 
Now, once we get to this point and we have it set in the water, we're going to go and get started. We're going to place down a brick wall, and behind that brick wall, we're going to place down a row of red concrete. That's going to go back in total 37 blocks back. So again, from this brick wall, 37 red concrete blocks back, followed by a brick upside down stair. We're going to go ahead and skip a space, place a red concrete block, and then a brick wall coming off that red concrete block like so. After that, going back up to the front here, we're going to go to the sides, one, two, three, four, and then our fifth uh, red stained glass block here, we're going to place down two red stained glass panes, so one on the fifth block, one on the sixth, after that, a brick wall, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, two, one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, and twenty-eight, red concrete blocks back, and then two brick walls, followed by an end rod, and then a birchwood slab after the and run. When that all done, uh, we're going to go and then continue to go out to the sides. We're going to start off by going ahead and going to our red concrete blocks. One, two, three, our fourth one. We're going to place down two red stained glass panes, two brick walls, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen red concrete blocks back, followed by a brick up sound stair and a brick top slab, just like that afterwards. After that's done, go ahead and go back over to the front. We're going to go back to our fourth red concrete block here, we're going to place down a brick top slab, and we're going to then place down a second top slab directly after it. We're going to then place down a row of stairs back, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 uh, stairs back, so just like that, and then we're going to then place down a row of 1 and 2 brick top slabs back like so. After we have, or actually sorry, it's going to be one brick top slab, and this here is going to be one less stair. So in total here we should have our two brick top slabs, our row of 10 brick stairs, and our two brick top slabs there on the front there. We're going to go and then have an indent to our third brick stair from the front. So third one here, we're going to then place down one, two, three, four, five, and six of these acacia wood signs on the middle six upside down brick stairs there along the center there for a little bit more detailing there and shaping for the hole. After that's all done though, that is going to wrap up what we have there for layer 1. Looking at from above here, this is what we should have with this layer complete. You're going to take what we do on the right side and flip over to the left side and this will be your final product. Anyway, so that right there is it for this layer. Let's go ahead and move on to our next layer, layer number 2. Alright guys, so going ahead and moving on to our next layer here, we have layer number 2. For layer 2 to get started with here, we're going to place down a brick wall on top of this one here in the front and then coming off here, we're going to place down a red stained glass pane. After that brick wall, we're going to go back one, two, three, four, five, and six red concrete blocks. From this, we want to go and go to the sides of these, uh, the third and second from last red concrete blocks, and place down two uh, red stained glass ball walls, a brick wall, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven red concrete blocks back. We're going to go then place down two brick walls to the side here, and two red stained glass blocks forward, and then going back to the brick walls, one, two, three, four, five brick walls or red concrete blocks back. We're going to then place down one, two brick walls, one, two red stained glass panes, just like that to the side. And then again back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve red concrete blocks back. Two brick walls, two red stained glass panes. We're going to then place down one, two, three, four red concrete blocks back, a brick up sound stair, and a brick top slab like that afterwards. We then want to take our red concrete, we're going to place down one, two, and three red concrete blocks on the inside. And then we're going to then place down a brick up sound stair like so, a brick top slab, and behind the red or the brick up sound stair and the top slab, we're going to place down two red concrete blocks, and then go back and place down two brick walls, and then a case wood trap door there on the very end. After we have uh, that all done there, that is going to pretty much wrap up what we have there for uh, this layer here, layer number two. And you're going to go ahead and take the same thing we did on the right side, obviously bring it over to the left side. And one thing you can do also is go ahead and fill the space in. It's not completely necessary, but for the tutorial, if you really want to, I like to fill my stuff in, make it a little bit more solid. You can go and fill this in with red concrete, though it isn't completely necessary. Anyways, that right there is going to com complete this layer, layer number two. And with that, let's move on to layer number three. All right, guys, going ahead and moving into our next layer. We go ahead and moving into layer number three. For layer 3, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to go ahead and start off by placing down a light gray stained glass pane on top of this red stained glass one like that, followed by an andesite wall that goes back from that pane. We're going to go ahead and place down a row of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 stone blocks back, and then we're going to place down two light gray stained glass panes on the third and fourth stone blocks back, followed by two andesite walls to the side here. We're going to go ahead and place down a row of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 stone blocks back 
On the last two stone blocks here, we're going to place down two andesite walls and then two like raised stainless panes going forward like so. We're going to then go back from those andesite walls, go back one, two, three, four, five stone blocks back, two andesite walls, and two light gray stainless panes like that going back. After that, we're going to place down one, two, th three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen stone blocks back, followed by two andesite walls, and then two light gray stainless panes. On the inside here, we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five uh, stone blocks back, a andesite wall, a light gray stainless pane. Right after that, then on the inside here, we're going to place down two stone blocks between on the inside here of those blocks, an air stone block back, a andesite wall, and a light gray stainless pane. In between the walls, we're going to place down a stone block, an air stone block back, and an air andesite wall, just like that on the end there. After that's all done, that's going to basically do it for uh, the outline there. And the final thing we're going to do here is take some polished black stone buttons. And basically, anywhere we have stone blocks here, we're just going to place down some polished black stone buttons here, representing basically the portholes that are located all on the side here of the ship. And we're going to go ahead and stop. Once we get to this point, we don't want to put on any portholes on the front here, or the sorry, I should say the bow of the ship. And uh, we're just going to stop at this section here. So these two blocks here of stone are not going to have any buttons on them. We're not going to do that. Uh, but anyways, same thing over here on the other side, and once you have that done on both sides there, that is going to conclude layer number three. Again, here's a look at it from above, and with that, we'll go ahead and move into our next layer, layer number four. Alright guys, so moving into our next layer here, we have layer number four. For layer four, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to go ahead and place down a andesite wall on top of this light gray stainless pane here in the front, followed by one, two, three, four, five, and six stone blocks back. After we have that done, we're going to then go to the sides here of these last two stone blocks. We're going to place down two andesite walls, two light gray stainless panes like so, going forward from those. And then also on the front here, we're going to go and grab ourselves an item frame and also a crossbow. So we have an item frame and then a crossbow. We're going to place down an item frame on this stone block here and a crossbow in the item frame rotate so it's facing downwards like so for the anchors here on the front of the ship. With that concluded, uh, we want to go and then place down a row of one, two, three, four, five, six stone blocks back. And then to the side here, one, two, and the side walls, and one and two, like raised stainless panes going forward from it. At this point here, uh, we want to go and then take our stone blocks, and we're going to count back one, two, three, four, five, six stone blocks back. To the side here, again, two and the side walls, two like raised stainless panes, and we're going to go and then take our stone blocks, going back from the walls, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen stone blocks back, two and the side walls two light gray stainless panes and on the inside here we're going to place down a row of one two three four and five stone blocks we're going to place down there in a side wall back like this a light gray stainless pane and then on the inside here one two three stone blocks and a side wall a light gray stainless block and in between these inside walls here we're going to place down a stone block followed by a stone block between the light gray stainless panes and then also a and side wall coming off this stone block on the rear there after we have that all done uh, we then want to go ahead and grab some polished black stone buttons and we're just going to place these all along the side here of the ship. So all the way along the side, going all the way up to the front here. So just like this. And again, we're not going to put any on this front section like so. And then at this point right here, uh, we can go ahead and just go to the inside here. And at this point, we're just going to go and fill this in with spruce wood planks. So taking spruce wood planks, we're just going to go ahead and fill in the deck here of our ship all the way back. And this right here will basically conclude this layer and you will need to fill this all this whole deck in with spruce wood because this all will be for the most part visible unless the area is under the superstructure but this all will be visible um, from the basically top down so make sure it's all filled in and once you have that all done here this is what the top down view will look like with layer number four and that is the last layer we'll be going ahead and doing with the half on half off from here on out we're going to be going ahead and building each layer basically both sides all together so these next few layers here are going to be pretty long as we do have a lot to cover in those layers especially this next one coming up layer five so uh, definitely be prepared for that but let's go ahead and move into our next layer layer number five all right guys so going ahead and moving into our uh Layer next layer here, we have layer 5. For layer 5, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down an end rod on top of this wall here, and then we're just going to place down an iron bar on top of it. From this, we want to go ahead and then place down a spruce pressure plate up here on the front. So a spruce pressure plate like so, followed by a redstone repeater with the notches spread apart. We're going to go ahead and place down one and two redstone dust pieces down the center, followed by again a redstone repeater here with the notches spread apart like so. To the sides here on these like gray stainless panes we're going to place down item frames and we want to go and then place down trip bar hooks in the item frames rotate so that they're facing forward like so after we have that done uh we're going to go and then place down a uh 
spruce trap door on this block right here. And we want to go and then place down a dark oak wood sign, which will be coming off the side of the uh, trap door like so. And also, I do recommend replacing this stone block here also with a, um, with a spruce wood plank. Kind of looks a little bit better there, so we're going to swap that out right there at the moment. And once we get to this point here, we're going to go then place down a skeleton skull at a slight angle here to both sides of that stone block. And then from here, we're going to place down a red stone up here, here in the center with the notches spread apart like so. An item frame to both sides, and in those item frames, we're going to place down white beds like so. Once we get to this point, we're going to skip two spaces back from that redstone repeater. Actually, I should say three. And then we're going to go ahead and place down a stone block. To the side to the stone block, we're going to place down a light gray stainless pane. A narrow stone block here in the center. And then a anisite wall to both sides like so. We then want to place down a stone upside down stair. Stone upside down corner stair to both sides like that. And this right here is going to be the start of turret number one. At this point, we're going to go ahead and take end rods. And coming off of the light gray stainless panes, the stone block, and... Um, all that, we're going to place down two end rods going forward there for the barrels for the main gun. Once we get to this point, we want to go ahead and then place down a redstone repeater on top of these two spruce wood planks. And again, we're going to spread the notches apart like so. After that, we want to go and then grab ourselves a spruce wood pressure plate again. We're going to place down one, two, and three on the side here uh, and on top of this one and the side wall. Same thing over here, one, two, and three. After this, uh, we want to go and then place down a stone block here in the center. Followed by a row of three of stone blocks directly behind it, and then a, another stone block here in the center. We're going to go and place down andesite walls here in the corners, like that for the turret ring. And up on top here, we're going to place down a stone block here, like we stainless pane to both sides. A stone block here in the center again, and an andesite wall to both sides as well. We're going to go then place down a stone upside down stair here, stone upside down corner stair to both sides. Uh, just like that of that upside down stair and we're going to go ahead and basically create turret number two and we kind of dipped into our next layer a little bit but whatever um we'll just go ahead and basically knock out the turret might as well um so just like this and we're going to go ahead and then place down a row of iron trap doors on top of it since we went ahead and did it anyway and also an iron trap door on top of the stone block here so uh went a little bit ahead of ourselves there for that turret but not that big of a deal um let's continue on next thing we want to do is we're going to go ahead and place down a stone or a skeleton skull at a slight angle right there coming off that andesite wall. Actually, sorry, we want a 45 degree angle, exactly. And we're going to place down another skull on top of this glass pane. So it goes like that to the side. Same thing over here, 45 degree angle, like that out to the side there. We're going to go then take our spruce pressure plates. We're going to place down one, two on top of those two stone blocks right there. And we then want to place down an additional pressure plate going back on top of this stone block like that on both sides there. Once that's done from this stone block here, we're going to skip two spaces and then place down a stone block here. We're going to do the same thing we've been doing for our turrets, so an andesite, or uh, like racing was painted both sides of that stone block. Three end rods, or sorry, two end rods coming off each uh, of these blocks, so you have basically three rows, or three sets of two there, like that for the barrels from the main gun. We're going to then place down a stone block here, followed by a andesite wall to both sides of this block, a stone upside down stair, like so, and an upside down corner stair to both sides of the stair, just like that. And after we move that, then we're just going to place down two iron trap doors on top of the stair and that full block. Once we get to this point here, we're going to place down a redstone rep repeater on top of this, in, or this uh, spruce wood block. And again, we're going to separate the notches uh, apart like so. And then to the sides here, we're going to place down a pressure plate on top of this wall here. And then one, two, three, four, and five pressure plates back for the moment. And same thing over here, one, two, three, four, and five back. Once we get to this point behind the turret, uh, number three here, we're going to place down our redstone repeaters like so on both sides with the notches spread apart. We're going to go then place down a stone block going back from the redstone repeaters there in the center. And we want to go then place down a light gray stainless pane to both sides there. A narrow stone block in the center and a narrow andesite wall to both sides. At this point here, we're going to go place down a narrow redstone repeater right here on this spruce wood plank. Just like this to both sides. Again, the notches spread apart and a spruce wood pressure plate out to the sides. At this point right here, we do have a difference in our two sides. So over here on the right side of the ship, we're going to place down two spruce wood pressure plates back. Over here on the left side, however, we are going to be going ahead and placing down a stone brick upside down stair after that spruce wood pressure plate and then an anvil. This right here will be for one of the cranes on the ship. So uh, it's going to be specifically here on the left side of the ship and the left side only. Um, so you can see here the two distinct differences here. After we get to this point, we're going to go then take our stone blocks and we're going to place down a row of three across this section here followed by a second row of three and then on both sides here we are going to be placing down a spruce wood pressure plate on the outer sides like so we're also going to place down a light gray stainless pane 
next to these two stone blocks like that. After that's done, we're going to then place down a uh, another row of, or actually we're going to do go ahead and this time do a yeah actually sorry a row three of stone across as well, and then we're going to place down an anisite wall to both sides. And after we have that done, we're going to then place down a row of one, two, three of levers along those stone blocks on the side here of the ship, and same thing over here for some anti-aircraft gun positions. We're going to go and switch to our spruce wood planks. We're going to place down a row of three across, followed by a second row of three across, and then we're going to place down our two anisite walls along the ends here. This uh, section here, uh, actually we're going to go and do the same thing two more times, so another row of three of spruce wood planks, and a side wall to both sides, and the same thing one more time here, a row of three across, and a and a side wall to both sides like that. After we get to this point, we're going to place down a spruce wood plank in the center, a stone block to both sides, and then a light gray stained glass pane come off the sides there of those stone blocks. From this, we want to go and then place down a, another spruce wood plank here in the center, another stone block to both sides. And we're going to go ahead and repeat this same row a total of uh, two more times. So, one, two, and our stone blocks here to the sides. This point here, we're going to place down a stone block in the center, followed by an andesite wall, which will go on both sides like so. We then want to go ahead and build back two more stone blocks down the center, so one, two, and again our andesite walls here to the sides, just like that. And that right there is going to basically start to form up our superstructure. And for the rear here, we're going to grab stone brick stairs. We're going to place down a stone brick stair like this on both those stone blocks there. A end rod coming off those first secondary batteries facing toward the rear of the ship. And in the center here, we're going to go ahead and place down a skeleton skull. Followed by what is going to be a stone brick slab. That is going to be coming off of the skeleton skull. So a stone brick slab. Dark oak fence gate in the coming off the slab like that facing toward the rear. A end rod, and then on top of that end rod, we want to go ahead and place down a iron bar. Just like so. And that right there is going to do to the rear. And then going ahead and moving into our secondary guns. Uh, we're going to need some stone brick blocks, some dark oak fence case, dark oak signs, and some skeleton skulls for this. Our first uh, secondary batteries are going to go ahead and go on top of this stone block here. We're going to place down a stone brick full block, a dark oak fence gate opened up toward the block like so, and then a skeleton skull coming off the side here of this block, as well as a dark oak sign on the side there. Our next gun is going to be located right here in this section, so this stone block here. So we're going to have the stone brick full block, a dark oak fence gate opened up toward it, skeleton skull on the back, and a uh, dark oak sign. Our next secondary battery is going to be located right here. We're going to place down a stone brick block, a skeleton skull coming off this side facing toward the front, and a dark oak fence gate coming off it facing toward the rear, and a dark oak sign. We're going to do the same thing over here as well, so I'm going to go and do this a little bit quicker, as I've kind of already explained the other side. It's the same thing on both sides here for these secondary batteries. They're all going to be positioned in the same position. So just like this on the side here, like that. Same thing right here. And that right there is going to basically make those turrets. Now at this point here, a little bit of an extra feature you can do, so if you have access to uh, the Minecraft debug stick, I definitely recommend putting it to use here. And what I mean by that is we can go ahead and select the facings here of the walls and we can go ahead and change them so that they are not connecting up to any of our um, fence gates or any of our, uh, you know, full blocks or anything like that. It just kind of creates a more, you know, standard divide there between the, um, the blocks and kind of makes them a little bit more separate instead of connecting in there. I definitely recommend doing this if you do have the debug stick and we're just going to go ahead and change these walls out like so. And we can even change the walls here that are facing back toward these stairs. Um, so we can go ahead and alter these as well um, so that they are not facing toward the rear here. And one thing to be cautious about is that they may um, be a little bit funky when it comes to putting blocks on top of them and they may go back revert back so if that's the case just make sure you keep your debug stick handy and feel free to go back and change these walls if these walls do decide to you know form back to where they were uh, but anyways that's pretty much what we have going on here for um, that layer we're going to go and take a look at it from up above here and this is what the finalized layer 5 should look like as you can see quite a lot was done and from here on out it should be a little bit easier as we have our superstructure base set up and we're just going to be going ahead and expand upon it Anyways though, that's going to do it for layer number 5, and with that let's go ahead and move on to layer number 6. Alright guys, moving on to our next layer, we have layer 6. For layer 6 to go ahead and get started with here, we want to go ahead and place down a stone brick stair, which is going to go ahead and go on top of this stone block here, followed by a stone brick upside down stair to both sides like that. We also want to place down a skeleton skull, come off the face there of that stone brick stair. Once we have that done, we're going to place down a stone block here, 
followed by a light gray stainless pane to both sides. And we're going to then place down an air stone block in the middle here, followed by this time an anisite wall to both sides. After that, we're going to place down an air stone block here, anisite wall to both sides here again. And we then want to place down an air stone block in the center and an air light gray stainless pane to both sides like that. Once uh, that's all done, we're going to then place down a stone brick stair uh, on this wall here to both sides with a dark oak wood fence gate coming off the stair, opened up toward it. And we're also going to go ahead and place down a skeleton skull uh, coming off both sides here of those stone brick stairs. After that's all done, uh, one thing also we're going to do is going back to our crane here. We're going to place down a stone brick upside down stair. Going up from this uh, stone brick upside down stair here, so just kind of continuing that up like an up, like an upside down staircase. And then we want to go ahead and then place down a grindstone on top of this anvil here for that uh, crane there on the left side. And we're going to go and leave it as is for right now. At this point here, uh, we want to go and then place down a stone block here in the center. And then coming off the sides of that stone block, we're going to go ahead and place down a stone top seb like so. Once that's done, we're going to place down an air stone block in the center, followed by an anisite wall again to both sides. And we're going to go and then place down two stone blocks down the center here with two light gray stainless panes to both sides of those two stone blocks. To the side here, we're going to go and place down a stone brick stair, which is going to be going ahead and going on top of this uh, inside wall right here. And we're going to go and then place down a uh, dark oak wood fence gate coming off of it, opened up toward the stair. And then we're going to go ahead and then place down a skeleton skull on both sides of that stair. Same thing over here on this side. So just like this. And again, you can use your debug stick for things like this, where the uh, panes connect up to the stairs. So you can go ahead and use that debug stick to actually stop that from happening. Anyways, continuing on uh, back, we're going to go ahead and place down a light gray stainless pane coming off this block here. And we want to go ahead and then place down a stone pressure plate to both sides, followed by an inside wall on top of these glass panes on uh, the outsides like that. Once we have that all done, uh, we want to go ahead and then take our levers. We're going to place down one, two, three stone bun or levers along the side here, one, two, three. And we're going to go and then place down a white bed in the center here, just like so. This point here, we're going to place down a stone block on top of this one here, followed by an andesite wall to both sides of that stone block. From this point, we're going to place down an air stone block back down the center, and we're going to go and then place down a stone brick slab to both sides like that, followed by a fence gate coming off the sides here of the slab and open up toward it. We then also want to go ahead and take a sign, and we're going to place down a sign here on the sides of the slab. And we're going to go and then place down a cobweb here directly in the center. After we have that all done there, uh, that right there is going to pretty much wrap up what we have there for uh, layer number six here for the build. Just making sure everything is good to go and everything does appear to be good. So here's an aerial view of what it looks like so far for this with this layer added on. And uh, with that though, that's going to pretty much wrap up the, that layer. And with that, let's go ahead and move into layer number seven. Moving into our next layer, we'll be moving into layer number seven. For layer number seven, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down a stone block on top of this one here, followed by a skeleton skull on top of this uh, stair here, and then a lever uh, on top of the bottom there. Those both both those stairs are facing toward the front there. We're going to go then place down a light gray stainless pane on top of these two panes here for this section here going up. And we're going to go then place down a row of or one and two stone blocks going back for right now. On the sides here, we're going to go and place down a andesite wall, followed by a stone stair. So we'll get a stone stair right here. Place it down on both sides like that. And we want to go ahead and then place down a skeleton skull coming off those stairs just like that. Stone block in the center here, man, and a andesite wall there on both sides. From this point here, uh, we want to go and then place down a dark oak wood sign, which will be coming off of the side here of this wall. So just like this here, to both sides. And we then want to place down a spruce pressure plate here in the center, followed by a lever to both sides like so. We're going to go and then grab ourselves a scaffolding block. We're going to place down a scaffolding block there in the center. And then to both sides of it, we're going to place down a stone brick slab followed by a dark oak wood fence gate coming off the stone brick slab like that opened up to the sides. We want to then place down two stone blocks here. After those two stone blocks, we're going to place down a lever coming off the sides here of the second block. So like that to both sides. And then on top of these stone, uh, or these anisite walls here, we're going to place down a stone brick slab to both sides. And we're going to place down dark oak wood um, fence gates coming off those blocks like so. And then a skeleton skull, which is going to be on the side here facing toward the front. So just like that. 
After we have that all done there, uh, going ahead and moving to the back for our crane here. We're going to go ahead and go to this stone block, and on top of it, we want to go and place down another brick wall. Coming off of it, we're going to place down a stone brick upside down stair. And we also want to go ahead and grab ourselves a chain. And for the crane kind of chain here, we're going to place down a chain on top of the, the bed here. Kind of a space of one between the chain and this upside down stair. This point here, uh, we want to go ahead and then place down a dark oak wood fence on top of the stone block, open it toward the rear, and we're going to then place down a stone brick stair on top of this cobweb, just like this. And we're going to then place down a skeleton skull here to both sides of the stone brick stair, as well as placing a skeleton skull on both sides of this dark oak wood fence gate, like that. And after that's all done there, that is going to pretty much wrap up what we have there for the main superstructure. And from this point here, going to our forward crane on the front here, we're going to place down a stone brick upside down stair. Coming off this one again, continuing to go up at an angle like so. We then want to go ahead and grab ourselves a barrier block. And we're going to place down a barrier block that goes on top of this stair and back one like so. So we'll give a sec for the other one to disappear. So it should look just like that. We're going to place down a lever on the bottom of this barrier block facing toward the rear so it should look like this and we then want to go ahead and place down a chain coming off the lever so just like that and right there is all we're going to do for this crane actually one last thing also is we want to place down a chain that's coming down in front of this stone brick stair and you can go ahead and have it come down two if you want or just one kind of up to you guys we'll just go ahead and keep it at one like that and that right there is going to wrap up what we have there for layer number seven taking a look at it from above here this we should have with the layer complete with that, let's go ahead and move into our next layer, which will be layer number 8. Alright guys, go ahead and move into our next layer, we go ahead and move into layer number 8. So for layer 8, to go ahead and get started with here, for this crane right here, we want to go ahead and start off by going ahead and grabbing ourselves a grindstone, and place on a grindstone that comes up from this stair and goes out to the side there like so. And then coming off the back here of the grindstone, we're going to place on a chain like that, and that's going to do it for that crane there, that's done out of the way. At this point here, we want to go and then place down a stone block on top of this one, a item frame in that stone or in that or an item frame on the stone block, a black concrete block in the item frame, and if you're on Java, we can go ahead and place a dark oak wood sign and an item frame in the same block space. So if you're on Java, we'll put a dark oak wood sign over the stone block like so. Um, if you're on Bedrock, disregard the sign and just place down the item frame. With that though, we're going to then place down a light gray stainless pane on both sides. Two stone blocks back down the center here and two anisite walls going back like that on the sides there. After that, we're actually going to swap out this middle stone uh, block for a stone upside down stair. And then we want to place down another stone upside down stair directly behind it like so. After that, we're going to go ahead and then place down an iron trap door to both sides like so of this upside down stair. And we're also going to place down a skeleton skull coming off the back here of the stair. We want to then place down two stone blocks here, an iron trap door. A item frame, same thing over here, iron trap door, and an item frame. And in that item frame, we're going to go ahead and place down a snowball like this to both sides. And as well as that, we can go ahead and grab ourselves some dark oak wood signs and place dark oak wood signs here on the sides of these iron trap doors as well. So just like this here, to both sides. With that all complete though, we're going to go and then go to this stone brick stair. We're going to place down a lever. On top of it, and then coming off of it, we want to go and place down a stone brick upside down stair. So just like that. We're going to then place down our chain on top of this one here. And again, uh, for this section here, you do have the option of going ahead and having the chain extended down two uh, blocks, or you can just have it one. Kind of up to you guys, but um, we're going to go ahead and go two for this back one here. At this point, uh, we're going to go ahead and then place down a narrow brick fence post on top of this one here. And after that, we want to go and then place down a skeleton skull going back from the fence post. And this right here should actually probably be a wither skeleton skull. So I'm going to go and swap this out for a wither skeleton skull like that, coming off that narrow brick fence post, like so. And then lastly, we're going to place down a skeleton skull on top of this stone brick stair, just like that. And after that's all complete, there, that is going to wrap up what we have there for layer number eight. And with that, we'll go ahead and probably move into our last our last final layers of the build. So with that, we're going to go and basically complete the conning tower, the mass, and everything we have left to do. So with that, let's go ahead and move into our last final layers. All right, guys, go ahead and move into our last final layers. To go ahead and get started with here, um, we're going to go ahead and place down a stone slab on top of this stone block here. Followed by a dark oak wood sign coming off the side of it like that. And then we're going to place down a dark oak wood fence gate to both sides like so. 
going f uh, from the fence gates, we're going to go ahead and go out to the side and then forward with an end rod. Same thing over here, out to the side and forward with an end rod, like that to both sides. We then want to place down a stone block here in the center. And after we have that done, we're going to go ahead and place down a skeleton skull at a slight angle like this to both sides of that block. And we then want to go ahead and place down a andesite wall in the center here, followed by a stone brick stair to both sides like that. And again, right here, we uh, kind of want to use our debug stick. It doesn't matter too much, but um, it is preferred if you can change your um, or use the debug stick to go ahead and change it so it is not connecting to this stone block there. And then anyways, we're going to then place down an andesite wall connecting to it on the back there. Um, not a major uh, problem if you can't do it, but it just kind of helps add to that accuracy a little bit. We're going to go then place down a lever on top of these two iron trap doors here. And then going up from this, we're going to place down another set of two of andesite walls on top of these two. Followed by a stone brick, stone brick stair there toward the front. Again, same thing for um, debug stick. We'll go ahead and kind of adjust this here so that it is not connected up to that stone brick stair. Um, and then we're going to then place down a skeleton skull on both sides of the stone brick stair like so. We then also want to place down a skeleton skull on top of these two stone brick stairs there to the side. We're going to then place down dark oak wood sign on the sides of this andesite wall here. And then going back from it, we're going to place down a dark oak wood fence gate, which we're going to open up toward the rear. Place down dark oak wood signs here on the sides as well. Like that. And also a skeleton skull here coming off the fence gate. After that's done, uh, we want to go and then place down another set of, or sorry, actually this time, sorry, a set of two of upside down stone stairs. So two upside down stone stairs up on top here. Skeleton skulls on the sides there of those stone stairs. And then on the very top here, we're going to place down a set of two stone brick stairs like so. And for the stone brick stairs, we're going to place down iron trap or iron bar or end rods, sorry, to the sides of the stair. And on top of them, we're going to place down two oak wood trap doors. After that, on the back here, we're going to place down a end rod that goes up from this, uh, actually, sorry, it's going to be a fence gate to begin with on top of this fence gate. So just like that, open it toward the rear. We're going to then place down a end rod like that. After that, we're going to then place down an andesite wall and then another end rod up like that and a dark oak wood fence gate on both sides of this end rod like so. After we have that done, uh, we can go ahead and then place down a block right here. And using our debug stick and a lever, we can actually go ahead and rotate this um, lever here so it actually comes off of the end rod like so. And so we're just going to set that up like so. If uh, you do not have access to a debug stick, you can just we're going to be using barrier blocks here. Just do a line all the way across there. So it doesn't really matter that big, that much. It's not really that big of a deal. Um, anyways, at this point here, we're going to grab some polished black stone slabs. We're going to place down two slabs on top of those stone blocks there. As well as we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves a um, grindstone. And we're going to place down a grindstone to its side like so. And then going back from it, we're going to place down a total of two chains like this and then a narrow brick fence post right here on top of this one. Now to the sides of that narrow brick fence post we're going to go and place down an iron trap door like this to both sides. Iron frames come off the sides there and in those iron frames we're going to go and place down snowballs. We can also take dark liquid signs and on the sides here of these iron trap doors we're going to put dark liquid signs like that. Uh, after that's done we want to go and then place down a wither skeleton skull here on the back or come off that narrow brick fence post as well. Then uh, we're going to go and grab ourselves an andesite wall. We're going to place down an andesite wall on top of this fence post here. Followed by a dark oak wood fence gate, which will be coming off both sides of the wall. And we're going to then place down a end rod coming off those fence gates. Just like so. And then after that, uh, we want to place down a fence gate right here and open it up toward the, uh, the wall like that. Followed by a skeleton skull, which is going to go on both sides here. Of this fence gate and then go back from the skeleton schools we're going to place down an end rod after we have that done going toward the front here we're just going to go ahead and place down a uh, placeholder block so we'll just place down a stone block here and we're going to place down a skeleton school coming off both sides of the block and then we can go ahead and delete the block like so after that on the top here we're going to go ahead and place down a dispenser block on top of this wall and then from this uh, we want to go ahead and use our debug sticks here to go ahead and work some magic uh, we're going to do the same thing here with some levers, so kind of a similar technique. We're going to place down a lever here, and we want to go and select the face and have it selected to the floor. 
and so it's facing backwards like so. After we have that done, uh, we're going to be going ahead and going to this section here. We're going to go ahead and grab a barrier block, and we're going to place down a barrier block above this stone block here, or above this section here, so kind of up from this uh, lever at an angle, and we're going to place down a um, lever underneath it like that to go ahead and form this kind of uh, little mass there that sticks off. And once we have that all complete, uh, we're going to then grab ourselves some end rods. We're going to place down a row of two of end rods coming off the sides here of this uh, lever. We want to go and then go up one end rod from the lever. So one up, and then we're going to then go one out to the side here, two both sides. Then we're going to go ahead and go up an additional two end rods, like so. On the second end rod up, we're going to place down again a end rod out to both sides. And then on the very top here, we're going to place down an iron bar on top, like so. And with that all complete, uh, that's it for the superstructure. And from here on out, we're going to be going ahead and doing the rigging. The rigging here is pretty simple for this ship and pretty straightforward. To go ahead and get started with here, we're going to go ahead and take barrier blocks. And from this lever here, we're going to place down a row of barrier blocks that's going to lead all the way back and connect up to this end rod, like so. And on both sides here of those barrier blocks, we're going to be going ahead and placing down stone buttons. So, just like that. After that's done, uh, we then want to go ahead and place down a stone button, which you can go ahead and go on top of the second barrier block here. We then want to place down two barrier blocks back from the stone button, and on the sides of those two barrier blocks, we're going to place down two stone buttons. We're going to go and then place down a third barrier block, but this time we're going to place down a stone button on top of it. We're going to go and then follow this up and place down another barrier block here. With again two stone buttons to the or yeah two stone buttons to the sides, like so, and we're going to then place down one more barrier block back. That will connect us to our rear mast, and again our barrier, but our stone buttons there to both sides of those barrier blocks. After we have that done there, uh, we're going to go and then grab our barrier blocks, and we want to go and go to this dispenser. We're going to place down a barrier block coming off of it, then two down, so two down and forward. And then one right here coming off this grindstone, like so. For this, we're going to take stone buttons. We're going to place down one on top of this one. Uh, two on the sides of this one. Then one on top of this one. And then two on the sides here of this one right here. And once you have that all done right there, uh, that's going to complete your rigging there for the ship. And with that, that is going to conclude our last final layers here for the build. And with that, that will conclude my tutorial here for the HMS Rodney Nelson class battleship. Hope you guys do enjoy this tutorial and are able to put it to good use. If you do, do end up using this build, I do ask that you guys give me proper credit for it. This being the from a side of the build, link to my channel where this video, if this does bring you social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for the build, you're free to use your favorite projects you guys are working on. Overall, enjoy the build, have fun with it, and all that fun stuff. Again, the big special links to Patreon supporter. Trench Fighter 8 for making this tutorial possible. And as always, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions. With that though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gary204, and I'll see you guys next time.